I just got done with class. I am on my way to the grocery store to go buy coconut flakes because we don't have coconut flakes and I need that in order to make the recipes. <laughs> The recipe calls for sweet glutinous rice flour and tapioca starch and these two bags are great examples that me and my family have been using for years and they work perfectly well and you can find them at your local Asian store. The ingredient that you will need is pandan extract since this is a pandan waffle recipe and these two are great examples of pandan extract. I tend to use the one on the right because it gives a better flavor and also a better color. The best coconut milk that I recommend is this brand, Aurora-ID. It goes so well with sweet, savory, all kinds of dishes and especially for this recipe. I'm the kind of cook and baker where I kind of just eyeball everything. As you can see here with the coconut milk, there was a little bit left over and I just added it in because I didn't want the rest to just go to waste. The only difference that it will make is in the texture, but at the end of the day, it will still taste good and it will still have that mochi kind of texture. Like I mentioned, this recipe does fall more on the mochi texture side and so if you're looking for a Belgium waffle kind of texture, this probably isn't the correct recipe you're looking for. You might have to adjust a few of the ingredients. With the panda extract, as you can see here, I'm actually not measuring it out, I'm just eyeballing it. I highly recommend you to measure it out if you are not sure how concentrated you want the flavor to be. I kind of have been doing this recipe for a few times now and so I have an idea of what I want. The ideal color that you're going for is that McDonald's Shammer Shake kind of color. So it should look something like this. Now that you have your dry and wet mixture, you want to combine the both of them. I highly recommend doing this method of first doing half of your dry mixture into your wet mixture, mixing it up, and then putting the remaining of your dry mixture into the bowl and mixing it up. If you went ahead and put the rest of the dry mixture into your wet mixture, that's fine. You'll just take a little longer mixing it up at the end you want to speed this kind of texture where it's kind of on the thicker side than it normally was my family and I, we do not like very sweet food and that is why I reduce sugar to two third cups. And here I'm using sweetened and coconut flakes and so it perfectly matches well with the two third cups of sugar. But if you want a more sweeter flavor or you are using unsweetened coconut flakes, you might want to bump that sugar up to one cup or more all depending on your preferences. Now that we have added all of the ingredients, this is what the texture should look like in the end with the coconut flakes. Now you want to grab your waffle maker, plug it in, and wait until it heats up. Once your waffle maker is ready to go, make sure you spray with non-stick cooking spray before you add in your waffle batter. I like to spray every 4-5 to five waffles that I make so that it doesn't get too greasy. You can use an ice cream scoop to scoop in the batter. I like to use one third cup because I find that that's the perfect size for me and for the waffle maker that I have. So depending on your waffle maker or how big you want it, how small you want it, it really depends on how much batter you pour in. I find that chopsticks are so much more easier for me to take out the waffles because it is more on the mochier texture. Additionally, you want to use a cooling rack to dry it before you plate it or else if you plate it first, it can get a little bit soggy so it all depends on your preferences and what you like and what you feel comfortable this waffle recipe makes about 12 to 20 waffles it really depends on how big or small you like your waffles and also on your waffle maker here's my waffle my sister actually made all these while i was cleaning up before i end this video i do want to put a disclaimer out there that this um specific dessert is from Vietnam it's a Vietnamese dessert but like the Hmong culture we are like it's a whole diaspora of Hmong people around the world and so a lot of our cuisine and a lot of our food is from different Asian countries and different places and we've just 
learn to alter it and change it up how we accustomed to it. This is not a Hmong original dessert recipe, but at the end of the day, um, Hmong people are everywhere. And so we share common traditions and cultures and especially food. I will leave my full recipe down in the description if you want to reference back instead of just pausing this video and looking and finding it back and forth. Mm -hmm.